Hey guys, what's up? So today I'm going to teach you guys how to make your own Twitch stream. So this is going to go through everything on setting up a stream as well as how to pretty much optimize everything. Because when you are on Twitch, you don't just want your game on there. You want to kind of distinguish yourself. So what I made is a secondary Twitch account just for this tutorial. Um, if you want to check out my main channel, you can actually go to it. It's twitch.tv slash wired. And right now I'm just doing some reruns. Uh, I've been streaming about a week and a half. I have 2,700 uh, total views. Um, and I am a Twitch affiliate already. And as boring as I am on Twitch, if I can do it, I know that anybody can. So yeah, go give me a follow if you guys don't mind. And also uh, get my buddy here to uh, 50 followers. His name is Destro's Finest. He's going to do a giveaway once he gets to uh, 50 followers so be sure to go ahead and follow him and you'll be entered into that as well so now we're going to get into the video so the first thing you're going to want to do is download a program called Streamlabs OBS and if you've ever used OBS before uh, this is pretty much OBS but optimized for Twitch streaming so once you download that you're going to go ahead and pull it up so as you can see there in the background I have it there I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of these icons here we have Streamlabs OBS and all you do is you sign in with the Twitch account and pretty much uh, yours is going to look something like this. You're not going to have anything set up. So what we're going to do is go ahead and start with the settings first. So in the stream tab, your stream type is going to be streaming services, services Twitch. And then if you go down here, find the server that's closest to you. Um, mine happens to be Ashburn, Virginia. Um, make sure it's not on auto recommended even though it says it's recommended it's always not been a good experience for me um, so like right here just try to find the server you're closest to if that doesn't work then I'll have a separate video on how to find which server that you have the best ping to apologize for that I'm having some allergy issues so your stream key so what you're gonna wanna do is go over to your twitch account go over to your dashboard and you're going to go over to, I think it's channel settings. And this is going to be your stream key. So you're going to copy this and paste it over into that box. That is right here. Go ahead and pull that back up. So go ahead and paste that in. Make sure you don't show that to anybody or they could stream onto your channel. And next thing we're going to do is go to output. And this is going to vary from computer to computer. Um, I recommend going to the advanced setting here. So instead of simple, go to advanced. And audio track is going to be one. And we're only messing with this stream tab. We're not messing with the recording. Um, so we'll go to the streaming tab and click into here. So uh, encoder, depending on if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you'll have the NVNC codec. If you don't, then you'll have software encoding. Or if you have QuickSync, uh, which is Intel, you can do that as well. Um, I would stay away from QuickSync. I would stick with uh, NVNC or software encoding. Software encoding is going to come straight from your processor. Um, so pretty much if you have a very weak processor and you're playing like an intensive game, then you're probably going to want to stream from the NVIDIA encoder. The reason I recommend the software encoder if you can is because it looks 10 times better than the NVIDIA encoder. So if you was to run these same settings with software encoder instead of NVIDIA encoder, it would look a whole lot better through the CPU encoder. And then of course, uh, go ahead and check this box and stream and for streaming service encoder settings. If you don't have those set up right, then it can actually get you uh, banned off Twitch if you use up too much of their bandwidth. So make sure you have that going. Make sure everything's good and not exceeding the limits. Now for the bitrate, I would recommend putting this anywhere from 3,500 to 4,000. Of course, you're going to want to check your upload speed um, and do about 80% of that or less. The thing with Twitch is if you put it to a high bitrate, people with bad internet will not be able to see it. So what you want to do is find a good balance between quality and pretty much uh, what your viewers can see. So 3,500 is pretty good for this. I recommend staying... Uh, around 3,000 to 4,000 and not going above or below or it'll actually look really bad on your stream of course this is going to depend on your upload speed and you want to be using a wired connection as well um, to check your internet speed just go to speedtest.net look for your upload speed 
Um, so anything above a 3.5 upload will be good. Um, so it's recommended that you don't exceed over about 80% of your network capacity. So if you had 10 up, you wouldn't want to go past 8 up in this section here. And of course, if you had like 5 up, then you probably wouldn't want to go past 3,500. So don't use all your upload bandwidth, of course, but pretty much most people nowadays, if you're wanting to stream, uh, you're going to have to have decent internet. Most people should be able to stream a bit rate of 3,500. I'm not really going to go too much in depth with it. Keep the keyframe interval to zero. Uh, that'll set it to auto, or if you want, you can set it to two. And that pretty much checks the frames over two keyframes. For the CPU usage preset, depending on how good your processor is, I wouldn't recommend going anywhere above uh, very fast or your stream will look really bad. Um, I actually stream on the fast or medium setting when I'm playing Fortnite, but that is because I have a really good processor. It's a 6 core, 12 thread, Intel i7 8700K, overclocked at 5.2 gigahertz. Most people are going to want to stay around the very fast preset. And if you're using the NVIDIA encoder, then you're obviously going to want to uh, pick probably, I would suggest, high quality on that. It doesn't even really matter what your preset is. Put your profile to high and level auto and use two-pass encoding. Pretty much keep that like it is. Of course, you want a constant bitrate on Twitch. Um, but pretty much, I'm going to recommend software encoding. And I keep clicking that. So anywhere from very fast down um, below medium is pretty intense uh, so you'd have to have something like a thread ripper for that mediums about the boundary of 8700k overclocked um, don't mess with your profile or tune uh, just go ahead and go down to audio so this first device is going to be uh, your speakers which is going to be my k70 usb pass through that's my headphones and of course select your microphone you can add more devices here I don't recommend adding any more than those two devices though. So when it comes to video, this is where you're going to be doing your uh, output scaled resolution. So this uh, base resolution is going to be the resolution of your monitor. Mine happens to be 2560 by 1440. Uh, most people will probably be 1920 by 1080. Um, so go ahead and select that to your actual monitor's resolution. That output scaled resolution is one going to be uh, 1280 by 720p. The reason you want to stay at 720p is because it looks decent and it's not hard to encode at 720p. And make sure your downscale filter is the last one here, the 32 samples. And depending on how good your computer is, you can do 30 or 60 frames. Um, if you're doing something like League of Legends or maybe like a card game, I'd do 30. If you're playing like Fortnite or CSGO, I'd do 60. Then of course hotkeys, you can set those up, advanced, I don't want to go into that, don't mess with that. And that's pretty much the settings for your Twitch. So now you want to start adding sources in. And so this is where it gets pretty interesting. So this is why I like Streamlabs OBS, you have a dashboard over here. And once this loads, you have my dashboard. So you have what is called widgets down here. This is what we're going to mess with today. And so with these widgets, you have stuff like alert boxes and everything so that when people follow your channel, it's going to pop it up on the screen. Uh, but actually, the first thing we're going to look at is themes. So I just want to show you guys that. There's a lot of themes to choose from. You can use preset ones. You can even import your own into the settings. And I think it's in the appearance tab or it might be in the advanced tab or scene collections right here. You can actually import widgets. Um, so what I suggest doing is picking a color theme. So for me, I did red, and I'll show you the exact one that I have for my stream. So if we scroll down a little bit, it's actually the target practice one. And of course, it's going to give you previews. So these are the screens I have. I have the starting soon, be right back, currently offline, the intermission, which I actually took out, and the stream ending soon. Then once you're on your stream, you can kind of move these around and edit them however you want. You don't have to pick that one. I was just showing you the one I had for my actual stream. So say if you wanted something blue, the most installed one is this one for Fortnite. So you can have cool stuff like a ticker up above. It's a really simple kind of layout here. And you know, you got stuff like uh, just a chat box. 
and of course these are really simple so we're just gonna go ahead and import a random one so we'll import this one right here it looks pretty cool I think I've actually used this one before so right here this one's pretty cool because you can put your name above and this is actually the game evolve I think <laughs> pretty sure it is so all you're gonna want to do is go ahead and check out one that you like and of course they have multiple pages of them go ahead and install that overlay and that'll just take just a second okay and once that is downloaded uh, you'll go back over to the screen and I suggest putting this to mute because your starting screen for some reason has volume <laughs> so there's your starting screen there's your live scene there's your intermission scene I usually take this out I don't really use that but you can use it if you want and the be right back scene those are animated they look pretty nice and you're probably gonna be overwhelmed at first at all the options you have here first off we're gonna go ahead and delete the background and here's the webcam webcam frame you can move it around however you want there's labels here as well um, so like right here if you wanted to change your name uh, we would find one called header name change it over to exilent and go ahead and hit done and of course you might have to rewind that back up a good tip is to go over here hit transform and center that horizontally and as you can see there it centers it up on your screen which is something that we might get into later but that's pretty simple how you do that of course I has my webcam going here and my webcam is pointing up as you can see it's up guys and you can actually disable that webcam and the webcam frame if you want or you can even move it around so I'll show you here so if we select both of these at once so click and then hold down shift and click the other one and it'll move them together and of course you can move them separate so if I just click webcam it's gonna move it separate um, and then you'll have to kinda square it back in there you can fix the size of your webcam if you want actually you can go into it right click it go to properties and change your resolution which mine should be set at 720p anyways we'll probably have to scale it back down we'll go ahead and scale it down and right there you go and then of course you can move them back over to where you want them kind of center them up there so that's pretty much how you set that up so I'm not gonna go too much in depth with that you guys can pretty much add and delete what you want so this alert box is what we're testing and so right here exilent mod is now following subscription this is what it'll look like you can move that wherever you want it this alert box is pretty cool because uh, it lets viewers know that you know they're appreciated that they're following the channel and it lets everyone know that they donated um, of course people is going to want that so the way that you set up your own personal alert box is go over to the dashboard widgets alert box and so right here um, you can actually open up the browser version of this which I suggest you do and so what I'm going to do is pull this on one screen and pull this over to the other and pretty much uh, the only thing you're going to want to mess with here it is probably the layout so you can see here we'll have the layout like this first and we'll test the follow so it looks like that of course it's not going to be that huge I can actually minimize it but where it's in that window same window um, you can change it a little bit make sure you save the settings go ahead and test that again so you can see there it's going to be centered up and you can have it display beside of it so pretty simple settings you can see there you can do it that way too which is how I like mine actually I think it's a lot more cleaner that way uh, you can actually change sounds in here they have a bunch of different stock sounds that you can use or you can import your own by dragging and dropping them I'm not going to go too in depth same thing with the image you can use gifts that they have or images or you can import your own as well and kind of do it that way you can change the message template so as we'll see here you can set that up as well <laughs> and you could do that for all of these if you really want to all mine set up on my personal twitch it's really simple and of course you can edit things like your chat box in here as well um, you can actually add in like your goals that you want like follower goals uh, stuff like that so it's really cool that's why so many people use Streamlabs and of course they have growth tools such as the chat box the twitch extensions all that 
Uh, we'll look at the chat box. So you got to install this chat box actually. The way that you install the chat box is you go over here to chat box. Or actually I don't remember. I think there's a way that you got to install it. Or no, no, my bad. The chat bot is what I'm talking about. Chat bot. And right here is the chat bot. So you got to install it and then this tab will pop up in your OBS. And so from here you can do chat alert. So when someone follows you in the chat, you can fix the preferences for that too. And also kind of announce it in chat as well as on the screen. And right here you can pretty much put the amount and the name, pretty much message, all that kind of stuff. Um, you can add different alerts in here as well. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, later on they're going to have the song request feature on this chat bot as well as mini games and encounter if you go into preferences there you can pretty much choose around on that so we'll, uh, go down to commands you can set up commands you can do timers which is pretty much set intervals of things that will be said within so many minutes uh, you can do mod tools like caps protection symbol protection link protection word protection so I'll show you this uh, chat bot, ac bot actually into effect here. We'll go over to my channel and we'll type in all caps like and it probably won't actually disable me because I'm a moderator but if anyone else pretty much went into there and said that it would go ahead and automatically block them out. So that's cool too. And then of course you can go live and there's going to be a chat box over at the right you can set up and pull that over and view your chat there. Uh, so what I recommend of course is having a second monitor like I do and you can kind of pull it over. Uh, you guys aren't going to see that but you can pull it between your monitors. I have three actually. Um, so what I do is I suggest that you keep your Streamlabs and your Twitch on a monitor so that you can view chat and then of course keep your game in the middle. But that's about all I can think of when it comes to streaming. Um, also, one other thing I want to mention here is this mixer here. So, uh, something I recommend that everybody does is actually go down to the settings here and click on filters and go ahead and add a filter. Ignore every single one of these except for noise gate. So, what this does is it's going to keep keyboard clicks out of the way. So, in OBS right now, I have a, uh, I pretty much have a filter set up to kind of filter out my keyboard clicks. So basically how this works is for my microphone I found 45 and 40 works perfect. So this open and close threshold you see here. So if it is below this threshold or above this threshold uh, whichever one you want to kind of say there I'm not sure the terminology it will actually mute your microphone. And then once uh, it exceeds negative 40 uh, decibels it will actually open it up. So as you can see here how I have this uh, set up I'm going to hit my keyboard. So here's it, me hitting it very soft. As you can see there on both mics it's not picking it up but if I actually talk and I activate the mic you can hear in the background that I'm actually clicking on the key. So if we do it too loud you can see it actually is picking it up hardly. Um, so of course if you set it too low, it's not really going to do you any good. Like we'll do something like that. Actually I think it's back this way. So if we set it up like this. Anywho, it just makes it a lot easier to detect. As you can hear there a little bit. So I found for me, you just got to fiddle around with this. Most people will be different with the way that their mics are set up. Look up some more videos on this noise gate. I might actually do like an extensive video on there. That'll help filter out keyboard clicks and stuff and keep people from cringing when they watch your streams. A lot of people don't set that up. They think it's really difficult, but it's really not. So I'm going to go ahead and log back into my other Twitch account here just to show you guys how I have everything set up. So we're actually going to go ahead and log out. And all you got to do is log in with your Twitch account. Okay, so I went ahead and did my two-factor exemption there. Uh, and as you can see here, the scene collections import. You can import your scene straight into there. So if you're at a friend's house and they have their OBS, then you can actually import it in. 
and I'll kind of show you how I have mine set up with my live scene like right here um, I have a webcam which is over to the left I have my November follow go I know this is kind of hard to see so November follow go uh, December sub goal I have my new follower top donation new donation and as you can see there I'm using that one template that I showed you guys earlier and I have everything just kind of categorized of course you, I forgot to show you how to add a scene so here I have Fortnite added as a scene all I do is click on that go to game capture it add source go ahead and add source uh, click on specific window and right here you'll have Fortnite once you launch it and make sure you set this to a uh, window must match title and I turn off capture cursor and hit done and it'll add it in there and that's all you do for a game capture it's pretty simple so that's how you set up your own stream guys hopefully y'all enjoyed and of course thanks for watching guys if you have any questions be sure to drop them below alright thanks for watching guys I'll see you in the next one peace